Okay, so example six says we're going to verify algebraically that two given functions are inverses. If these are truly inverses, you will be able to show that you can put the g of x function inside of the f of x function and it will simplify to x. You will also show that you can put the f of x function inside of the g of x function and it will simplify to x. So these are composition functions. If they are inverses, they will completely undo each other and we will get x when we are done. So when I say verify algebraically, you have to show all the steps. So I'm going to do exactly what I ex expect you to do on a quiz or a test to show all the steps. So that's what you should do in homework too. Now, um, I feel like it helps some people to color code some of this. So I'm going to rewrite it using color. Um, if that helps you, great. If you have trouble seeing my, the difference between my color, um, please tell me because I can use different colors. I just don't know your eyes yet. So I'm going to do anything that has to do with the f function in blue. So f of x is 3x minus 1. And I'll use opposite for g of x. I'll use orange. g of x equals x plus 1 divided by 3 for orange. <coughs> so I have to show that I put g of x inside of f of x, it will simplify to be x. <coughs> so what that means is, what is g of x? x plus 1 over 3. That means I'm going to do f of x plus 1 over 3. These directions are telling me wherever I see an x in the f equation, in the f equation, or function, I should say function, in the F equation, wherever I see an X, replace it with X plus 1 over 3. Oops, that was kind of off. In the F equation, wherever I see an X, replace it with X plus 1 over 3. That's what this is telling me. This is directions right here. So my f equation is 3x minus 1. 3x <coughs> minus 1. So here's my x minus 1. <laughs> so instead of writing x, I'm going to write x plus 1 over 3. Okay, so I replaced x with x plus 1 over 3. Now once I've done that step, I can just simplify. So I'm going to simplify right here. Um, where, people mistakes is, where people make mistakes is they do not follow their order of operations correctly. So order of operations, what's first? Parentheses. Inside of the parentheses, can I divide x plus 1 by 3? I mean, I could separate it if I want. Not really. Uh, after parentheses, exponents, don't have any of those. After exponents is multiplication or division. Can I divide. We just try to do that. What do I have next? Multiplication. I'm going to multiply 3 times x plus 1 over 3. So remember 3 is over 1 and you multiply straight across. I can multiply this out then simplify <laughs> or I can use some logic here. If I multiply by 3 x plus 1, I would multiply the top by 3 and I'm dividing by 3 what do I know about multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3? They are inverse operations. So I could cancel these out here. Does the 3 go to the 1? Does it go over here to the 1? No, because that's not in parentheses. So I'm just canceling it out from here and I have x plus 1 minus 1. Then we're going to simplify that. What does the plus 1 and minus 1 do? It, it, they cancel it out, they get 0, and we get x. And what was I trying to show? 
that this equals what? X. So I just proved that it does equal that. This is like a proof. Remember proofs? Aww. Don't worry, we're not writing all the words. We're just doing the math, okay? We could write all the words. So that is step one. Step two, we're going to do the exact same thing again, only we're going to put f of x inside of g of x. So I'm going to color code over here. My f is blue. Oh, I'm still rewrite it. My f is blue. My g is orange. And I have to show that that equals x. So inside of G, I'm going to put F, and I go up here, and F is 3X plus 1, or minus 1. So wherever I see an X in the G, that's where my 3X minus 1 is going to go. So I wrote my G equation, but instead of X, I replaced it with 3X <laughs> minus 1. Order of operations. On top, can I do anything inside of this parentheses. What am I distributing? Is there a number multiplied? So I'm not distributing. Can I do anything inside of the parentheses? No. Um, there are two understood parentheses that you can't see, but there really are understood parentheses here and here that say you have to do everything and everything on the bottom separately before you do the division. Those are understood parentheses. So that means just do the top. There's nothing to do in the bottom. Just do the top first. So once I look in 3x minus 1 and can't do anything there, what's my next step? Add together the plus 1, which gives me 3x. And on the bottom, I have 3. I've done everything I can do on top. So now I'm going to divide by 3. And you guys should know at this point, what do you have? x. Okay, so what you're doing is showing that these do equal steps, or these steps do equal x, okay? That's what you're doing for this. Yes? Yeah. Say that again. Well, you have to show me the steps. Yes. So the, it's not the final answer, it's the steps are the whole answer. Like, there isn't one answer for this, it should equal x. Now, if it does equal x, let me let me back up. If it does equal x, then that verifies these are inverses. Because maybe I give you one that's not. And you show me that it doesn't equal x, and you say these are not inverses. There's another way to find out if they're inverses or not, but we're not doing that. We are doing it by that in your toolbox of math that you keep just in case for the future. Okay, so next one, same exact thing. And I'll, I'll color code this time, but I'm not going to color code every time. So for this one, f of x equals 8x cubed, and g of x equals the cube root of 2x. That kind of sounds good, like they're going to be inverses. So we're going to show that f of g of x equals x. We're going to show that f of g of x equals x. <coughs> so I'm going to start by doing f of, what is g? Cube root 2x. That means inside of the f equation, wherever I see an x, I'm going to make it into cube root 2x. And then outside of that x, I have all the equation the same. So I have 8, and then I have cube root 2x, which is taken to the third power. So we do our order of operations. What should I do first? I kind of hear some noise from over here. Was that Dylan? Exponents? Okay. So I'm going to cube what? I'm cubing the cube root. Am I cubing the 8? Why not? Not in parentheses. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to cube the cube root. And when you cube a cube root, those are inverse operations. What happens? You just get 2x. All right. Then I'm going to multiply those together. 
and I get 16x. Are these inverses? Is it very possible that when you do this by yourself, you might make a small little mathematical error? <laughs> no? Okay. I do it all the time, so most of you probably will make a mathematical error. So if this one doesn't work, that means this one won't work either. If you get one that works, if you get one that works and one that doesn't work, that tells you you have a mathematical error because they either both work or they both don't work. So we do both of them, okay? So we'll do the other one just to verify that we did our math right. The other one is g of f of x has to equal x. So g of 8x cubed has to equal x. Nope, not equal. I mean, it does, but plug it in now. So I have cube root of 2 times x, so 2 times 8x cubed. I have taught pre-calc before many errors occur because in Algebra 2, you did this a while ago, and in Algebra 2, it was not everybody's strongest part of the book either. This is just something that a lot of students struggle to really do well on. Cube roots. How are we going to do that? What should we do first? Amelia, do you have an idea? Order of operations, what do you do first? So I'm not going to, we're not going to use the word distribute, it's just multiply. Right, because we're, it's not like going more than once, it's just 2 times 8, good. So key root, so that's an understood parenthesis under here, it says do this part first, 16x cubed. Now we need to cube root. And the cube root, you have to look for perfect cubes. Does anybody see any perfect cubes under there? Neem? Ooh, you see an 8? I see one, almost. I can almost see one. It's not there yet. 8 times 2 times x cubed. Now I see an 8. So 8 is a perfect cube. Any other perfect cubes in there? x cubed is a perfect cube. So those come out and become 2x, but there is still left over that 2 that didn't come out. So now, are they inverses? No, not inverses. Because they do not equal x. How about you guys try the last one? You try the last one. And then I will put up the answer as well, so you can look up here as you get it done. But I'm going to come around and troubleshoot if you get stuck somewhere. 